So we've talked about what all the, oh, sorry. <laughs> that was all I had to finish. <laughs> Are you looking for a neighborhood that has a lively atmosphere an incredibly inclusive culture, beautiful views and a strong sense of community? Let me show you Eureka Valley, also known as the Castro and Dolores Heights. We're gonna talk about what it's like to live here, how much it'll cost you, and be sure to stick to the end because I'm gonna give you a little bit of a sneak peek into one of the most expensive homes that we've sold in this area. This location has no shortage of restaurants, bars, shops, landmarks, and parks. We are just a stone's throw away from Dolores Park, one of the most popular outdoor locations in San Francisco. This location is also very much centrally located and has access to public transportation throughout. Here we are at Mission Dolores Park. As I mentioned earlier, this is one of the most popular outdoor locations in San Francisco. It's about 16 acres of lush greenery surrounded by palm trees. Here you'll find great views of the city skyline and the San Francisco Bay. This park is well known for its diverse mix of visitors and fun laid back atmosphere. You can find visitors here sunbathing, picnicking, there's tons of activities to do. There's a basketball court, there's a playground if you have kids, a tennis court, a soccer field, and a couple of dog playing areas. If you know anything about San Franciscans, we love our dogs. Personally, I love to come here during the summer with some of my friends and have a great picnic. There's a few eateries surrounding the park where you can grab some food and drinks. If you haven't tried Buy Right Creamery yet, be sure to stop by. They have some of the best ice cream the city has to offer. And if ice cream's not really your thing, then head over to Tartine. It is a wonderful bakery with some of the best baked goods in the city. Personally, I like to bring a few friends. A couple of us go to one store, a couple of others go to the other store, and we meet here in the park. And if you're looking for big views, then Twin Peaks is a must-see. Perched at around 925 feet above sea level, you're gonna get incredible 360 views of the city. So whether you are a nature lover, an amateur photographer, or someone who just enjoys views, you're gonna love it up there. A little bit of a pro tip, make sure you dress in layers so you can get a little bit foggy and a little bit cloudy up there. So be cognizant of the weather, which is really a good tip for anywhere in San Francisco. Another big view location is Corona Heights Park. Be sure to stop by during the spring while the wildflowers are carpeting all of the greenlands. That park will give you access to some really nice hiking trails and also Randall Museum, which is an amazing resource for educational and hands-on activities for families and children to enjoy. We're now here at DuBose Park. Although this is a lot smaller than Dolores Park, this is still a loved location by local residents. You'll find people here on sunny days, sunbathing, picnicking. If you have dogs, you'll love bringing them here. There are a couple of areas where you can play with them off leash. If you have children, there is a playground right behind me. And if you love fresh fruit and produce, they also host a farmer's market. And if you're looking for yet another small park options, there are so many options in this neighborhood. You can head over to Sword Mini Park. That park is well known for its community garden, native plants, and concrete slides. Yes, you heard me right. There are concrete slides. Now remember, it's BYOC, bring your own cardboard when it comes to enjoying those slides. And if this is your first time visiting our channel and you're interested to see more videos like this about what it's like to live in San Francisco, be sure to hit that subscribe button. My name is Valerie. I'm a buyer's agent with the Christian team. We are working hard every day to help buyers to find a place called home in San Francisco. If you are a buyer or a seller looking to make a move, be sure to reach out to us at hello at ruthchristian.com. This neighborhood has tons of places to eat, ranging from cozy cafes to delicious bakeries and even some high-end restaurants. Right now, we're gonna head over to Verb Coffee Roasters. It's one of my favorite places to go when I don't really feel like working from home. I wanna be in a coffee shop atmosphere, grab a nice cup of coffee and do some work on my laptop. Another option is Starbelly. That place has something for everyone. I highly recommend their pizza. Fable, which has delicious food and a beautiful garden patio to enjoy your meal or brunch. Since the 1970s, diners have been coming to nautical-themed Anchor Oyster Bar for fresh fish and oysters, one of my favorites. Toad Hall is a great place to have drinks. They also have a nice outdoor patio that everyone can enjoy, especially on summer days. If you're looking for more of a lively restaurant and nightclub feel, head out to The Lookout. It's a favorite among locals and a great place to go to brunch or a drag brunch. Another option for a drag brunch is Bar Bow. Um, they have drag brunch on the weekends and it's a really fun place to go dancing. 
If you're more of a wine lover, be sure to check out Blush Wine Bar. Or if you want more of a wine shop, then head to Castro Village Wine Co. and enjoy tastings and you can also take some wine home with you. Now that you've eaten all that food and drank all that wine and you want to burn it off, head over to Barry's Boot Camp. They have amazing hit classes, half running, half strength training classes. It's one of my coworker Yesenia's favorite place to work out. You can also break a sweat at Soul Cycle. They have an iconic location in the Castro. Cliff's Variety, with its quirky and creative window display, is truly an institution. They sell an eclectic mix of goods, including houseware, toys, costumes, and beyond. Just off Castro Street, you'll find Fabulosa Books. They have a great selection of new and old books. Now for some shopping experiences, head off to Sue Gennaro's Designer Consignment. It's an award-winning fashion retail store. It's curated with high-end clothing from Tom Ford, Gucci, Prada, vintage and emerging designers. Another favorite of mine is Crossroads Trading. If you haven't been there just yet, be sure to check it out. They offer a range of resale fashion where customers can sell gently used clothing for cash or trade and shop for name brand clothing at a great price. Now let's head over to the Memorial at the Harvey Milk Plaza. We're gonna learn more about the Castro and its rich and meaningful history. Let's go. Castro is one of the first gay neighborhoods in all of the United States. This area has a long history of activism and it was at the epicenter of the gay rights movement. Currently, we're standing at the memorial at Harvey Milk Plaza, which honors none other than Harvey Milk, who was a visionary civil and human rights leader. One of the first openly gay officials to win a seat in the San Francisco Board of Supervisors in 1977. He gave a ton and ton of hope to the LGBTQ plus community who was on the receiving end of widespread hostility and discrimination. If you haven't yet watched the movie Milk starting Sean Penn, I highly recommend it. It gives you a great insight view into what it was like here in the Castro in the 1980s in the fight for gay rights. This is also the location of the landmark flagpole which proudly flies high the iconic rainbow flag. Nearby is also Pink Triangle Park, which is one of the first U.S. landmarks to remember the LGBTQ plus victims that were persecuted by Nazis in World War II. Now we're standing in front of the Castro Theater, which is in and of itself a work of art. Here, there are so many ways to be entertained. You can watch indie films, foreign language cinema. You can participate in really fun sing-alongs, lectures, and be a part of film festivals that showcase art from around the world. This location became a historical landmark in 1976. Now come with me as we walk down closer to 18th Street so we can walk the rainbow painted crosswalks. We are now at the corner of Castro and 18th where you can see that the crosswalks have been painted in rainbow colors. The crosswalks and rainbow flags throughout are a true symbol of the LGBTQ plus pride that this welcoming, diverse and inclusive community offers. Now there's no shortage of activities, particularly during Pride Month, but really there are art and street festivals scattered throughout the entire year. Okay, so we've talked about what these neighborhoods have to offer and all the things that you can do here. So I bet you're wondering, what is it gonna cost to live here? Well, the first thing to keep in mind is that the buyers that are looking at these neighborhoods are also looking at Noe Valley and DuBose Triangle. And what really attracts them to these areas is that these sections are very much centrally located. They have great access to public transportation. They have lots of sun and enjoy tons of walkability. So there's a good mix of condos and single family homes in these areas. And although most buyers would probably prefer a single family home, a lot of them really don't have the budget to go that high and don't want to give up all of the amenities that these areas have to offer. So what they do is they push themselves into the condo market. So first let's understand what the average single family home costs. A single family home that's about a three bedroom, two bath home in this area is about 2,300 square feet and it's going to land somewhere in the $2.9 million range or $1,340 a square foot. Now, you're definitely gonna find some homes on the low twos, maybe 2.1, 2.2, 2.3 million, but those homes are gonna be on the smaller side and a little bit quirkier. At that price point, you're definitely gonna make some compromises. Either they're gonna be in not the best, most walkable locations, you're gonna have to tolerate some funky bedroom layouts or some finishes that are not the nicest. 
Now, on the other hand, when we're talking about some of the most expensive homes in these areas, those are selling at around the low seven millions. We're actually on 19th Street, where we sold last year one of the highest selling homes in the area at 7.2 million. Now, at this price point, you are not expected to make many compromises. What you can expect is a gorgeous layout, top of the line finishes, and tons and tons of views. This particular home actually sold in one day. We put it on the market on a Thursday, had one little twilight tour showing it to people that were somewhat interested and it sold the next day. And the reason for that is that there are so few of these homes available that when they come on the market, they're snatched up really, really quickly. To tell you a little bit about this home, it was a 4,500 square foot home, four levels, had five bedrooms, three bedrooms, two baths on the main level. You had a gorgeous entertainment level that was open with a powder room, floor to ceiling windows, jaw dropping views. You had a family level that walked out to a glorious yard. Just gorgeous, gorgeous home. It was practically perfect. And to top it all off, it had a four car garage, which is unheard of in San Francisco. Now at this price point, the only compromise you're gonna make is that to get views like this, you're gonna have to be up a little bit of a hill. So we're at the top of 19th Street where you're still walkable to Castro, but you're gonna have to walk up a little bit of a hill to get back home. Now, the average person cannot afford a $7 million house, and you might be thinking, I can't even afford a $2.9 million single family home. Well, then your next best option, if you don't wanna give up all of the amenities that these locations have to offer, is to push yourself into the condo market. The average three bed, two bath condo is about 1,800 square foot, and you can get one for just under $2 million or 1050 a square feet. Now. Since the post-pandemic era, yards have become very, very important. So a shared yard or even yet a private yard will definitely push up prices a little bit and views will do the same thing, also push up prices a little bit higher. Now, if you don't wanna give up on your dream of owning a single family home, I totally understand, even if that means giving up on this location. The next step would be to start expanding where you're looking. I will tell my buyers, if this doesn't work for them, let's start looking at Glen Park. Glen Park has similar size homes, good walkability, some sun, and it also adds in a BART station. The homes are at slightly more affordable at 1050 a square foot. Again, the average home there is 2200 square feet, so that puts the price somewhere around 2.3 million. The other neighborhood I would recommend is Bernal Heights. Bernal Heights have smaller homes than Glen Park. They're a little bit quirkier, but they're still very charming. The average price per square foot there is about 1050. The average size of a home there is around 1800 square feet for a three bedroom, two bath home, which puts you right around the $2 million mark. If you liked everything I just had to say about Eureka Valley and Dolores Heights, and you're thinking to yourself, hey, I have an even bigger budget, then be sure to check out our video on Noe Valley to find out why it's one of the most sought after neighborhoods, if not the most sought after neighborhood for single family inventory in the city. On the other hand, if you're still curious about our more affordable options in the city, be sure to check out our videos on Glen Park, Bernal Heights, West Portal, and Mira Loma. I think you'll find those really, really informative. If you're considering a move to San Francisco, please give us a call or email us at hello at ruthchristian.com. We are eager to give you the grand tour of the city in person and help make your move to San Francisco a smooth one. Done? <laughs>